I'm looking at how much money Kiwis have to see if they can afford to invest in property. And through this, you're gonna learn whether you might have enough money to buy an investment property. When the bank looks at your mortgage application, they are gonna run a whole bunch of tests in order to see if you can afford it. And rather than recording a video to teach you all of those tests and all of those calculations, I've just built you a spreadsheet instead. And this spreadsheet runs a lot of the same calculations that the bank does when they assess your mortgage application. So here is Sarah and Joe, and they wanna purchase this investment property based in Cross Street in Christchurch. The price on that is $559,000. And for that, they're gonna get a two bedroom, one bathroom townhouse that rents for roughly $490 per week. Sarah and Joe, they've got two kids and they've got two cars in their household. They've also got a mortgage. It's $300,000 and that's against their house which is worth 600 k Now I'm going to assume that they have what's called a very clean situation. No credit cards, no high purchases, no overdrafts, no personal loans, no student loans, nothing like that. Now I've already run the numbers for Sarah and Joe and they would need to earn about $69,000 per year each. And the way that I figure that out is I then go to the results tab of the spreadsheet and I can see that the max that they can borrow is about $561,000 and that is okay because they want to purchase property with about $559k. So they are able to afford that investment property. And the way we figure that out is the bank runs these three tests, which I'll tell you about in a minute, and they are going to look at the one where they can borrow the least amount of money. Their limiting factor, that is what's going to determine how much they can borrow. But what I want to show you is how debt impacts how much somebody can borrow. So let's give them a $10,000 credit card, and let's assume that they are not even going to spend a dollar on this credit card. So it's got a $10,000 limit, they haven't spent a single dollar on it, and let's see how that impacts their ability to invest. So now they can only afford to borrow about $486,000. The amount they can borrow from the bank has gone down by about 70 grand, even though they haven't spent a single dollar on that credit card. Now, they aren't going to be able to purchase an investment property for three years if they continue on as they are. There are three things that Sarah and Joe could potentially do. They could wait for three years, they could cancel that credit card, or they could increase their incomes. And I've already run their numbers. They would need to increase what they earn to about $74,000 each. So both of them would need to be able to get about a $5,000 pay rise if they are going to be able to keep that credit card and then be able to purchase that property right now. Let's now take an example of a rent vesta. That's somebody who chooses to purchase investment properties but rents where they live. Now Simon wants to purchase this property on Marcroft Street in Christchurch and that is $539,000 and for that he's going to get a two bedroom, one and a half bathroom townhouse that rents for $490 per week. Now we'll come back to his income but right now he just needs to look after himself. He's probably got flatmates, but they're not dependent on him. He's also got a car, and he's spending $350 per week on rent. And because he's a rent vester, I've got to assume he doesn't own any property yet, but he has saved up a cash deposit of about $108,000. And he's got a clean situation, no credit cards, no higher purchases, no overdrafts. Now, if you want to run the numbers like I'm doing for Simon, you can download this spreadsheet completely for free. The link is down in the description. And when you do that, you'll see that there are three different tabs down here that are running some pretty complex numbers. So when the bank assesses your mortgage application, they usually run three main tests. UMI, that's uncommitted monthly income, that is an income test. Secondly, debt to income ratio, that's also an income test. And then LVR, which is a deposit test. Now, I won't take you through the details of what that all means. All you need to know is that these are running in the background and what you want to focus on is the results tab. So I've said that Simon earns $91,000 a year in salary, and when I go to the results tab, I can see that is enough for Simon to be able to borrow about $540,000, which is gonna be enough for that $539,000 property.
The key thing to note here is that actually deposit or LVR is the main limiting factor for Simon and that is the thing that is going to set his max borrowing or his max ability to invest at 540k but obviously his income is just over the threshold where he's going to be able to do that as well. Let me show you what would happen if we decreased his income from $91,000 to $80,000 a year. You can see that UMI, uncommitted monthly income, then becomes his limiting factor and he'd actually only be able to borrow 424k. So for Simon, $91,000 in salary is what he'd need to be able to invest. By now, you're probably getting the message that whether you can afford to invest depends on your personal situation, how much you earn, yes, but also how much debt you have. And if you want to keep learning about how you can invest, you need to subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every Monday and Wednesday. And if you've been subscribed for a while, you might already own an investment property or two, and that's going to put you in a similar position to Bobby and Caitlin, our final case study. These guys already own two investment properties and want to purchase their third, and they're looking at this three-bedroom townhouse in Mount Roskill in Auckland. The purchase price of this is $895,000, and for that, they're going to get a three-bedroom, two-bathroom townhouse that is expected to rent for about $750 a week. Let's look at their situation now. Two adults living in the household, no kids yet, and two cars. And we can see they already own three properties. They've got their own home, which is worth a million dollars and has a 650k mortgage. And they also own two investment properties that have a million dollars worth of debt across them. And I've also accounted for some amount of rental income. I want to show you what would happen if we really loaded them up with debt. So let's say that they've got a credit card and that has a $20,000 limit. And let's assume they haven't actually spent a single cent on that, but that doesn't matter in the bank size. I also want to give them a car loan, and let's say that's $40,000 that they're going to pay off over seven years, and the interest rate is 0%, and let's also give Bobby a $10,000 student loan. Let's see whether they could invest earning $100,000 in income each, which is a really good income. Well, according to this, they aren't going to be able to invest for 12 years. They're going to need their income situation to improve and to pay off some of that debt before they can invest. In fact, I've already run the numbers. And if they wanted to purchase that $900,000 property out of Mount Roskill, they would need to earn $170,000 each before they could start investing in property. A massive income. But I also want to show what would happen if you took out all of those personal debts. So they've got rid of the credit card now, they've been able to pay off that car loan or have found some money for that, and Bobby has also paid off his student loan. See how they would be able to afford a massive $1.2 million worth of property, and yes, they would be able to afford that 900k property then. In fact, if we also decreased their mortgage, and let's say they got it down to $200,000 now, they would be able to decrease their incomes all the way down to about $112,000 each. And they would still be able to invest in that property and still have some headroom. So my message here is that Bobby and Caitlin could decrease their household income by a massive $116,000 and still be able to invest in that property. So it's not just your income that matters, it also matters how much debt you have. So you might be wondering how much income you need to have to be able to invest in property. And obviously it depends, not just on what you earn and who earns it, it also matters how much debt you have. So if you want to get an understanding of how much income you need, there are two things you can do. Firstly, download the spreadsheet and run your numbers. This is going to give you a good ballpark about what you can afford to invest. But don't go into the bank saying, I ran a spreadsheet and I can afford a million dollars according to that. So Mr. Bank Manager, please give me my million dollars. This is a ballpark, it's a guideline only. So the second thing you can do to get an even more accurate picture is talk to a mortgage advisor. And if you'd like a recommendation, use our sister company, Catalyst Financial, they are excellent. But if you want a ballpark about what you might need to earn, if you've got a household income of 90 to $100,000, it's worth having a conversation about whether you might be able to invest.